Hello, everyone. This is Ed Brenniger, and welcome to the Eddie Network podcast. My guest today is Julie Hughes, and she is a friend of several friends of mine. And so I'm excited to get to know Julie, and she is an author, and uh, and whatever else she is, I don't know, but I'm excited about learning that. So welcome, Julie, and thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's so great to be here. It's nice to meet you in person. <laughs> yes, sort of. Virtual person. Yeah, virtual, at least. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell us about yourself. Who are you and what, what uh, kind of things occupy your life or your days? Oh, gosh. Well, first off, I'm a mother of two, two kiddos. Um, I'm a runner and an author, and I like to write poetry. <laughs> Um, and I'm also a licensed physical therapist. Oh, well, yeah, you have a long talk about physical therapy because I'm, I'm going to my physical therapist this afternoon to oh, <laughs> feed on. And uh, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh. So uh, as a runner, what what uh, are you a competitive runner? Are you just... yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I would guess I would say I am. I like to run marathons. So um one of the highlights of 2021 was finally getting into the Boston Marathon and running it there. Um, I was I qualified to go in 2020, but because of the pandemic, we just did it on our own terms. So it was great that we finally got to go the next year and actually run the roads and the streets of Boston. What was that like? What was that experience? Oh my god! Oh, it was. I had to write a book about it. It was so amazing. <laughs> but I don't think I did it. You know, you just can't even do it justice. Even in the book, I felt like, oh my gosh, it, it's a, it's hard to even write in words. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say it made a huge impression on my family because I've done marathons before and my kids are like, oh my gosh, this is forever. Let's go home. You know, they're complaining to my husband at Boston. They're like, when are you going back? <laughs> so they really want me to get back there <laughs> so they can go. So they, they, they could grasp the bigger picture of yeah. what's important to you. Oh gosh, the boss city of Boston. I mean, it, it's amazing. The just the whole city is around this event. It's, it really is a big deal. It's it's awesome. Well, I, I went to uh, graduate school up uh, on the North Shore of Boston. So and oh. went down once while I was up there to, for the marathon, and it it was great. And I and I stood at that corner in. Um, Oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but there was a, a a famous runner from Boston who, you know, he's kind of the the legend of of the marathon, and he had a, a running store right on this corner. You know, you're coming down a hill, and you take that you take your right or left hand turn, and that's that you're on. I think you're on um, Mass Ave all the way into to the finish. I think this is the, the, the okay. Line. And um, I remember standing there and watching all these runners come by and thinking, oh, my ankles hurt. <laughs> I used to run a little bit and I wasn't very good at it. So, so I didn't have the ankles for it. So uh, were you pleased with your time? Yeah. I, you know, it wasn't the time I wanted, but it took me 20 years to get there. And so I wanted to just take it in and celebrate to finally achieve that goal that has taken me so long to get to. So I wasn't worried so much about my time other than just really enjoying finally being there and achieving a goal that's just taken so long. <laughs> and you have a bond with everyone that's ever done this. Yes. It's pretty cool. I wear that jacket around and it's amazing. The conversations that will strike up just random strangers so it's it's really neat yeah so have you inspired others to do this I think so there's some of my running friends who were like we didn't really think we'd want to do Boston but now we do <laughs> so, so uh so what was your book How, tell us a little bit about this book that you wrote about your experience well okay so I've, I've written three memoirs the first memoir was um it, it kind of ties into getting to Boston because it's like, okay, why, you know, I went through some pain. I had to go through some healing. My goal was to run Boston. Um, but I was struggling with some pain emotionally and physically. So the book is, you know, how I moved through that and healed to where I qualified for Boston. And then the second book 
is actually, okay, I'm training for Boston and I'm there running it. Um, and that's called staring down a dream, a mom, a marathon or a mission. Um, and so I really get into actually, okay, what it was like to be at Boston and the, that whole experience to try to really bring the reader in to it, which I hope I did it well enough, because like I said, it's, it's really hard to put in words. Sounds like it ought to be a movie. Yeah, that would be cool, right? <laughs> you would. Gosh, yeah. I mean, uh, particularly if you played yourself, but you know, it's, I mean, I think, uh, let's think about this for a second. Here, here you are, you're a mom, you got a family, you got a, a job, you are a physical therapist, you, you have all these things going on in your life. And you take on this huge endeavor mm -hmm. and uh, and you succeed at fulfilling this endeavor, this vision or this mission that you have. Mm -hmm. um, how many of us need to take on something like that, put our commitment to it, bring mm -hmm. our family in to join us in that commitment so that we mm -hmm. together will succeed in achieving this thing. I mean, that's what I hear you saying. And yeah. that's why I think that's, that's really very cool. I mean, it, I'm, I like what I'm hearing you say, because I think there are a lot of people that need to believe that they can do things that are extraordinary and far beyond anything that they ever thought they ever thought they could do. And particularly what all their family in particular and their friends thought they could do. Yeah, I, I agree. We, I think we don't give ourselves enough credit <laughs> when we have a team behind us, when we have that support, it, it's possible. It's possible. It takes work. I, this isn't easy for sure, but if you're focused, you're committed, you, you know, it's something you're really, or I want to do this, then it so can how happen. Did you, how did you convince your children that this was something you should do? How did I convince my children? I don't know if I convinced them. them. I'm going to go do this and I'm, I'm going to be they, giving a lot of time to preparing for this. This is not just a simple walk in the park. Oh. This is something big. And so I want you to understand why I'm doing this. How did you, how did you talk to them about that? Yeah. I, I, well, it's funny because I would have to say, listen, every Saturday I'm going to be gone for two or three hours. I would get up very early. So it would kind of help buffer that time. But I said, listen, you're going to get up. Dad will be there to, to help you out. And I'm going to be gone running. And, and they kind of joked, they're like, oh yeah, mom's always running. But they started to see me doing this and they, they were, I mean, they were proud of me. I think they were like, wow, mom's out there running. And and then it also, but it also gave them time with, with their dad, yeah. you know, they got to watch their shows together and spend time with him. And then they saw their mom, okay, showing up and doing this hard thing. I'm hoping they're watching that so that they know, you know, you can do this too. Do you have something you really want to go after to see? Yeah, it takes work, but. Well, kudos to your husband. The time. Oh yeah. And it, because it is, it really is a family. Everyone had to be on board for yeah. it. And so I said, listen, this is my goal. You know, can we do this? <laughs> it's not just me. It's everybody had to come together and help. Yeah. So has this led to you being asked to do some speaking and things like that? Is that, is that uh, the words on this? Are you, a, let me ask, have you become a celebrity because you did this? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe to my children. <laughs> what better per persons to be? And that's perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you said you wrote a third book, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. That was, um, I didn't think I was going to write this, but as I was writing it, I figured this might help another family. So after I ran Boston in 2021, three months later, my husband was diagnosed with testicular cancer and it was a reoccurrence. So it came back. Oh, mm. yeah. So I wrote, he's in remission. Um, okay. So I wrote a book um, about our family's journey, things I did to keep moving forward, to keep, to take care of my family um, through this time. 
and that was just published this month, actually, because this month is in April is testicular awareness month. So I wanted to make sure I got it out at that month to raise awareness because we do have a son. So now I really want to make sure that we're educating him. Well, this will be coming. Our our conversation will be coming out in June, so we'll we'll recelebrate the launch of your book then. <laughs> and that'll be great. Send me all that you wanted me to put in the show notes for that, because we'd love to we'd love to get people to um, engage with the with the topic. You know, as a guy, I'm you know I'm aware yeah. of that, and uh, yeah. you, know, the, you know that's a sensitive part of our lives. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, it's, uh... is, is in such a gentle way. So, um, so, so when, when a family member, whether it's the wife or the husband, um, becomes sick like this, takes on a serious illness, what is it that a family, how should a family respond to that? What, what is it, what's your advice to us? Hmm. Cause I think I, my sense is there are a lot more people, a lot of people are having, uh, more issues in their families since COVID than than before, and and so this this may have a focus on your your own family, but it has a wider application to all these families out there who are, are struggling with health issues with their with their loved ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. I think the first thing you know when we found out that this returned, you, you know, I got a lot of feeling of helplessness, this powerlessness, and luckily I had my running. I had writing. I already had this writing practice. I didn't realize how much I would have to lean into that. Not only moving my body, keep moving, um, but writing to try to gain back some sense of agency, some sense of empowerment, because I couldn't control, you know, what was going on, you know, gas, this is what he has to do. I can't change that. Um, I think the biggest thing, because I had the children, that was my biggest, that would keep me up at night. How am I going to tell them? What are the words I'm going to use? I had no idea, you know, and that was the tricky thing is how am I going to do this? And, um, for me, it, we sat around the kitchen table. I offered some snacks. I told them in little bite size pieces information a little bit at a time um because at the time my son was 10 and my daughter was eight so I didn't want to overwhelm them and we just told them a little bit as we learned as what they would need to know um I read a book that kind of changed my mindset too was to just keep looking for joy keep finding joy in the simple things to Mm -hmm. keep moving forward to keep supporting your family um, and again, running helped that, you know, what am I seeing out there? What am I hearing? Those things kept bringing me back to kind of keep my foundation, I guess. Um, and I have a strong faith and I think leaning into that was a blessing <laughs> because I couldn't have done this without, yeah. without having that personal relationship. So, um, I don't know if that answered your question, if that helps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I was looking for. I, I love the fact that you you did this a little bite size. You, you led them to their own awareness of what this means. So so what kind of questions were they asking you or, or asking your husband? Yeah, so in the beginning, they didn't know anything, but my my son was noticing, you know, Why isn't dad playing with me? Why is he always on the couch? Because Jeff was so tired and we're like, what is going on? Um, And so I'm like, oh, they're noticing. I need to start saying something. Um, So initially when we found out, yes, the cancer returned, it's seminoma. um, I wanted to use that word. I didn't want to use cancer because ironically, two days before my daughter comes home from school and says oh someone told me at school that people with cancer die I'm like and this was too I already knew that Jeff had it and I hadn't told them yet so I was like okay (laughs) I had to quickly say listen um not everyone you know dies from cancer there's lots of types there's treatments coming out all the time you know so 
I had to sort of give her that reassurance knowing like, oh my gosh, I hope, yeah. I hope Jeff does make it, you know, and I'm telling her. <laughs> so that was really hard. Um, but when I did sit down and say, you know, that was her first question, you know, is dad going to die? That was the first thing she asked me. And that was really hard because, you know, he's 49, <laughs> you know, he's really young. Um, and I had this, you know, no, honey, he's, he's going to be okay. He's going to make it through. And that's the good thing about luckily for Jeff, this type of cancer, it is curable, the, the curable rate is, you know, 90%. Um, so I had to remind them that my son was angry, you know, rightly so he was, his first reaction was, you know, dad can't play with me. Um, you know, he's always on the couch. So I, so we had to just keep reminding them that, you know, yeah, dad is, is going through something. He's going to be really tired, I'm going to take care of you. We're going to, we're, we're going to be with you. You you know, I wanted to just keep reminding them that I was going to be there and take care of them. Yeah. Um, and, and luckily I had a great um, community of support. And, <laughs> and that's a whole nother thing. I would tell families, ask for help, ask for help, receive help. That was so hard for me in the beginning to accept that because I wasn't sick. I, in my, you know, my, thought was, well, I'm not sick. I can do this myself. I don't need to ask for meals. I don't need to ask for someone to take Jeff to the treatments. I can do it. Um, but I had to realize, listen, this isn't all about me. My kids need me too. And I need to accept the help and receive it. And that was a huge lesson I learned in this season. This gift I learned was to receive. Um, and it, and all I had to do was say, thank you. I didn't have to think I had to do something in return other than that. And I think showing that for my kids was a huge thing yeah. because I think we hear a lot, you know, give, 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 but we need to do both. There has to be both. And I, and I even learned that. <laughs> it's a hard, it's a hard time for them and, and for you to go through. And of course it is for your husband, but uh, you yeah. know. That's, um, I think about, I think about your children. I, I wonder if they had friends whose parents had had some cancer experiences and that they were w wondering how that, how those two compare, you know, their friends, parents, you know, suffering from cancer or their uh, something like that, or grandparents or something. And cause they, you know, and they're hearing things all the time, you know, and they're, and they're interpreting all this information they're having to interpret it. And we don't get a lot of opportunity to talk to them about what they're hearing, you know, um, cause there's so much information coming to them. So it sounds like what you did was really, really smart. And, um, and so how do they feel now about the whole experience? How do your children feel? Um, you know, I, I think they're grateful. I think writing this book was, again, a huge blessing because they're talking about it. They're sharing with me things, you know, yeah. um, and I've asked them, you know, you can talk to me about this. They want to read the book. And I said, well, yeah, we'll read it, you know, as you're a little older, <laughs> but they went through it. So there's pieces in there. I write about them and I've had them read it. So they know this is what I wrote. Um and I think, I believe that we're, we're stronger from it. We're wiser, we're kinder. Um, I, I like to think that they've learned, um, you know, empathy and compassion and to see, but to also see that, you know, people can get better. <laughs> um, well, it's, it certainly is a learning opportunity, obviously. I mean, that goes without saying, um, yeah. but, you know, I think about, your children, and I think about children in general, but the things, how they learn things as a child. And, you know, when uh, my oldest, I have three, when my oldest was about 12 and my youngest was, would have been, she would have been about five. My youngest would have been five. There are three of them. I, I realized that 
in order for my children to grow up well and to become mature adults, I had to start early on treating them as adults and being able to trust them with hard decisions. Mm -hmm. So they would ask me a question and I would not answer it. Instead, I would say, well, what do you think? Well, let's talk about this. Let's work it through. What is it what you want? Mm -hmm. and, and what that gave them was a sense of security that they could think through things, mm -hmm. sense of safety, that I was there for them. Um, and it made them very independent mm -hmm. so that when all these things in life that come upon them, they, it's not like they just kind of flow through it. You know, they suffer just like the rest of us suffer, but they suffer with wisdom and they understand things. And I, and I think your, your, your thing about gratitude being kind of the, the product of all this is really, really important. And I, and I think that's a hard thing for people. Um, you know, so I, as you know, I've just in the last 10 days gone through a, a surgery to replace my, my hip mm -hmm. and um, my son's um stepped up to take care of me and one came in for four days and then another came in for four days and one's here back with me today and um the other will come in on friday and um and i wanted to make sure that they knew that i appreciated what they were doing and and not one i didn't want them to feel like well because he's our father we're obligated to go take care of him mm -hmm. i didn't want that yeah. I wanted them to want to care for me mm. because I was willing to place my welfare into their hands. And mm. so they have been, as my oldest says, well, I've been nurse, nurse ratchet, you know, from that old movie, uh, you know, and I, and I've listened to them and I've obeyed mm. what they have told me to do. That's great. And it has united us at a deeper level mm. of, um, of relationship because of that mm -hmm. and i see that sort of thing ha having happened with you yeah as you interacted with your children at a deeper level mm -hmm. than would be expected oh they well they can't they can't handle this so we'll just won't tell them you know yeah. i've seen that in families where hard things are not shared and then oh yeah they get mm -hmm. uh, the child grows and th is 35 years old and finds out that well I didn't know my father had had a child out of wedlock. Why didn't anyone tell me that? I mean, things like that. I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that goes on. You're right. I didn't want that. And, and you know, and that's the thing. They didn't know Jeff had testicular cancer in 2011, 2011. And so I circled back and told them this story. Yeah. They didn't know. And again, I, I think they can hear this stuff. <laughs> they, they can take little bits and hear it and we can expand on it as they get older, you know, little by little. Well, that's fantastic. So what is it that you would like to see come from the book that you've written about this? I know this, you know, you're, you're talking, we're talking in April. This is, um, this is a special month for you in that regard. So tell us a little bit about what your hopes are. Well, you know, initially, like I said, I, I didn't think I was going to write a book, but as we were going through this, I was writing a lot. And for me to, to help me process, to help me get out my fears, my worries. Um, and then I was writing this, I'm thinking this could be a great guide, maybe a resource for other families, especially families with young children, yeah. you know, because I, I do think it's important. We, we let them know what's going on little by little we tell them and we just don't because they know my kids knew they noticed and they luckily they expressed that to me um ahead of time like they already knew before I was ready to tell them <laughs> um so again I think my biggest hope is that this is a is a resource for families for even caregivers um in the book I do share some tools that I use to help move through this time. And so I'm hoping these tools can be a resource for others. Um, Could you give us an example of one of these tools? Sure. So movement, you know, movement was a huge part and you do not have to be a runner. I, I did use running to help me, but other movements. So at the end of each chapter, I have a section that's titled, it's your move. 
and it's a channel on YouTube. And every day right now, I'm just dropping a, a movement um, and they're all different ones. So um, if you can't lay down, there's one standing up, there's one sitting, um, addressing our nervous system, because when we are um, in danger, not just like physical danger, but emotional um, stress, our nervous system will let us know. And so I realized, okay, I need to add, I did a lot of, they call them like nerve glides. I did a lot of that during this time because I was having a lot of nerve symptoms um, and and discomfort. Um, so I was learning to, to add these in to my day so that I could stay healthy through this. But I recognized how my body was letting me know, <laughs> was letting me know. Okay, let's 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 talk about this because we got we got some time left, and I think this is a, an important topic. And I've learned this over the last ten days, right. yeah, or actually the last two and a half years. Um, as and so you're you're talking ab about these nerve things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that a product of tension, a stress, kind of taking over your body and constricting it, and kind of bringing it into kind of a knot that is very difficult to un untie? I guess, I guess you could call it, use that as like a metaphor. Um, I think what, what, how I like to explain it is we have, we have 45 miles of nerves throughout our body mm -hmm. and it's looking out for us, right? So any type of danger, whether it, okay, yeah, my husband was just diagnosed with cancer. And so, okay, my body, my mind, everything's connected. This is coming into my system. And then the nervous system is processing that. Right. And what's gonna, there's got to be an output. There's got to be an output of some sort. <laughs> it was weird. I got, I randomly, the night we found out I had ankle pain and I couldn't even walk. I mean, it was crazy. That's, but because that's the I, thing I was looking for you to be able to yeah. identify a, a particular manifestation yeah. of this. Yeah. I was like, I'm just standing there making the kids lunches. And then now I'm limping to the fridge to put them in. And I'm like, what just happened? And I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I just found out that, you know, Jeff is, has cancer and it has come back and I'm scared and I'm worried and I'm mad. I'm mad because I thought this wasn't going to come back. So all these emotions, and this is how my body process, you know, this was the output. Ankle yeah. pain. Yeah. I understand that. Um, yes. Not, you know, and I don't know if, you know, if, if everyone does, but I hope this is more now. Yeah. Common knowledge that that is possible. So when you, so let me ask it this way. When you're, uh, I think we all deal with stress. Yeah. And we all deal with stress differently. And, and for some of us, that stress becomes some sort of physical pain that we're feeling yeah. and, and it is physical you know it's not a mental or an emotional pain it may be that but it really is physical you know, like you felt it in your ankle yes yes I, I i have felt this in my left buttocks for really going back about 15 years mm -hmm. that's how far back this goes mm -hmm. for me this is my and yeah. um and now now that the hip is resolved, that's that's the that's the focal point of the care that I'm going to receive from my physical therapist, mm -hmm. because that became the source. Of, that's where the tension became. Um, that's where it resides. Yeah, that's where your pain experience was. Yeah, that's right. Right, and it's awful. Mm -hmm. It is because it has other manifestations with that. Mm -hmm. So I I think people don't read their bodies well enough because I think we are, we're very mental, you know, we're mentally oriented. We're, we want to have a good purpose. We want to have a good reason. We want to think clearly. We, and we think if we do all of that, that resolves all our, our, our issues, mm -hmm. but that's really just a small part of the deeper things that, because I'm thinking about your children and if you had handled it differently, they would have been traumatized by this and that trauma would be felt in their body. And, th and they would not necessarily know how to identify how that trauma is being felt physically, but that's what they would be feeling. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that in a lot of people, you know, that I've met, you know, and 
you know, some of it is family oriented, some of it's relationship oriented, some of it's work oriented. So my, my question really is, and you're, you're a runner and you're a physical therapist. And so I'm, I'm asking this from your, your experience of how, how should we listen to our bodies and be able to respond when situations arise that are really difficult for us to deal with? Yeah, I mean, I guess the best thing I can say is, yeah, first pay attention, being able to be aware. And what does that require? Well, it requires us to turn off all the noise, okay. right? I mean, one. <laughs> yeah, we're on our phones or we're on this or we're on that. And we've got all this stuff just inundated, you know. So I think my first thing is, okay, can I shut this noise out? and be present with my body. Where do I feel? Where do I feel the stress? Where do I feel the tension? Is it in my stomach? Is it in my back? Is it in my neck? You know, huh? What can I learn from this? Why am I feeling this here? And maybe it's a simple, well, let me just step outside. Let me change my environment. Let me go for a walk. Let me do a movement. Maybe it's I'm going to turn on some music. I, I mean, so I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not like, oh, I feel this. So now I need to always move um, again. It's OK. What is my body trying to tell me? Do I need to just leave this? You're environment? Listening. You're right? listening. Maybe it's the person you're with. That, OK, I just I've had enough. I need to step away. And that's OK. Um, but to be able to start recognizing that, I think sometimes we, it, and this is me, I did this for many years. I would feel it, but I would just ignore it. I would shove it down. I would keep going. And I wouldn't stop to ask myself, wait, what is, what's going on here? Why am I feeling all of this? What are the other things going on with me? Because we're not this separate, I mean, all the external things and things going on inside my body, it, it all contributes. It, it all contributes. It's multidimensional or multifactorial, maybe is a better word, um, mm -hmm. when we are feeling things in our bodies. It's not just one thing. There's so many things that contribute. So awareness really is not one thing either. It's really no. being attentive to everything that is within the context of our lives. And yeah. But that what makes awesome. you happy? You know, what are, what's one thing you can do that just makes you happy? What's, one, you know, even starting there, even what's one thing that I can do right now that makes me happy right now? Well, I, I think you've already told us, I think yeah. you've already told us probably the most important thing, which is to be grateful, mm -hmm. to express gratitude. Because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. always something that's been given to us, brought to us. Yeah, I mean, I just look out the door and I'm, wow, <laughs> you hear the birds, you see the sun coming up. I mean, oh my goodness, it's really, um, it's really, um, it's a miracle. It's, it's, it's wonderful <laughs> just to focus on that simple beauty that we have available to us all the time. And that was one thing I noticed just being out in nature during this season was that helped, it helped me. It helped me get through. And your children helped you get through it. And oh, yes. I'm so glad they had each other. And they did because we would play. We played so much. <laughs> and they understand much. how grateful you are for the way they have responded mm -hmm. because of the way you were with them. Mm -hmm. I think I think these are lessons that are really important for us, and 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 whether we deal with our families, you know, your spouse doesn't have to have cancer to to have to do these things. You know, mm -hmm. just the the normal stresses of everyday life, of work, of of uh, you know, paying the bills and raising children and taking care of your parents and your grandparents, and you know, all these things that come at us. You know, um, you know, we don't really sign on to this when we're eighteen years old. No, I don't. Right. If we knew, we probably wouldn't. <laughs> but it, but it comes to us. I mean, it comes to us gradually, and all, and then, but in some cases, it comes 
bang, right, really quickly. And we have to respond well. And um, yeah, I think what you've shared with us is really fantastic because um, you provided a, a, a relatively simple story of coping with a difficult situation in a family. And that allows us to see that we don't have to kind of magnify the response in order to respond well. Yeah. We're going to play with our kids. We're going to talk with them. We're going to answer questions as they ask them. And, right. and 20 years from now, when they're married and they're, they've got kids and you're, you're bouncing their, your little grandchildren on your lap, yeah. and you're going to talk, look back. You remember those days? Well, this is why we did it. Thank you for that. <laughs> I hope so, you know, because I, there's moments when I think, oh gosh, could I have done better? Could, you know, but I don't entertain that anymore. I just said we did the best we could. Um, and I see them now thriving and happy. And so I have to believe that we did okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me ask you one last question because I think it's, it's, I think my, for my hearing from you, it's part of your story. Um, so how does your faith, how has your faith affected this whole experience that you've gone through? Mm -hmm. I think it, well, it's interesting. Well, for me, I, I leaned in, in into it more than before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I had to, I, I wrote verses out. I had them in my car. I had them in the kitchen. I had them in my bathroom because it's really easy to go to the negative and to, mm -hmm. you know, start why did this happen you know just ruminate on and it is not it did not serve me that was not going to serve me or help my children um so being able to go back and say okay these are these are these truths that I know I'm going to write them down um and and keep going to them and filling my mind with those things so that I could keep my courage and keep going and look for the joy. Um, and in all of this too, my husband um, became closer in his faith. And, and that was something that he's been really struggling with. So it, it's very interesting. Uh, the gift that came out now we can see that the gifts that came out of this, yeah. when you're in it, it's hard to see these gifts. And I just encourage everyone when you're on the other side, you're going to see, you're going to see the gifts from it from it oh <laughs> well, i totally agree with you and i would suspect that this, this is where you find your hope for the future yeah mm -hmm. thank you julie, i had another question to ask julie and and so julie how do you celebrate the 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 success or the the fulfillment or whatever it is that you want to describe this experience with your husband and father of your children. How, how do you all celebrate this so that you have a, a way of saying thanks? Hmm. Well, I will say that just this past Saturday, we all ran a race. It was called the Good Samaritan 5K, 10K race. And my son and I, we ran the 10K, my daughter and my husband they ran and walked the 5k mm -hmm. and it was just a blessing to see Jeff cross that finish line. And his goal was he wanted to get under 40 minutes. And so he was able to run it and walk it 36 minutes. Um, and I think that was huge for my kids to see that because for so long, he's been on the couch, <laughs> you know, he's been on the couch and hasn't been active. And so this past, I would say these past six months, I told him, we're going to run this race. We'd love for you to be there. If not participate, we'd love for you to participate. And so he started walking, started doing a little bit of running, jogging, um, and he was able to show up and run. And we all had shirts. Um, I founded a club called Run to Write Club. And so we had we formed a team. There was like 25 of us and we all gathered and we all showed up and did this this run. So that was an, a way to celebrate. Um, you know, we obviously celebrated after after the chemo with balloons and a sign and, you know, 
Um, but this was huge because he was able to get out and, and move. And that's been a hard part of this is to want to get out. This is the real milestone. Yeah. Real it milestone is, is being able and, to be. And I think people need to know that, you know, the journey is long, even after the chemo, this takes time. It's slow and steady. You know, his chemo ended in May of 2022. And here we are April of 2024. Um, so it's just keep going one, one foot at a time, one step at a time. That's great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Absolutely. Julie, this is special. And I thank you for being with us today and, and what you've told us, but more importantly, who you are to your family. And that's, that's an example that we can draw upon to say it is possible to go through hard times and, and come out of it stronger mm -hmm. and better for it yeah. when it's hard to see that in the middle of it. Yes, it is. <laughs> You have anything you want to sit, tell us as we go? Anything last, any last word? Oh gosh, any last words? Kind of a parting shot. Uh, it's, you know, I, I guess if you're going through a hard time right now, you're, you're not alone. I just want people to know you're not alone. Get outside and you can see that you're not alone and to keep going and, and reach out to at least, you know, find that one person or, two people that you can lean in even you know we lean into people when we're going through great times but we really need to lean into people when we're also going through the rough times because it does it does bring us closer I agree and I agree. to not be afraid to share that with someone you know who can take that on right find those people that are willing to sit with you and just be there with you yeah thank you for being with us today thank you great. And, uh, thank you. Um, wish you and your family all the best. Thank you so much. I thank you for having me here. It was great talking with you. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you you gained something from this. That that wherever you are right now is not where you have to remain. Whether hmm. and particularly if you're struggling in some way. So just realize that there is always a way through this. And maybe the place to start is Julie told us, maybe you start with gratitude. And if you can be grateful for the hard times you're in, maybe you can discover how to get through that to find good times where you're even more grateful because of what you've learned. So it's a good, it's a good message, Julie. And we'll see you all again here on the Eddie Network podcast. Thank you and goodbye.